How's it going, buddy? Good. How you been, Joe? Good test. Good, good, good. Everything good, buddy. Everything good, yeah? Great to have you back on. Uh, give us your introduction, your famous uh, saying there. Well, you know, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. You know, <laughs> I tell you guys that uh, it's always a pleasure to be on the show with you guys talking about the up-and-coming fight tonight. You got uh, Devin Haney versus... Uh, Lomachenko's. It'll be a good fight tonight. It sure is a good fight. It's a fight that uh, we've been waiting for for quite some time, and we finally got this uh, great matchup. Yes, 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 yes. It'll be a good one. I met Devin Haney when he was 10 years old, and I thought, him, who's, your, who's your trainer? He said, my dad. I said, bring him over here. He brought his father over. I said, listen, sir, this kid is championship material. Ten years later, he got the WBC lightweight championship belt around his waist. And now, now he's got all four belts. I was just going to say, he's got more than one title now. And he's on top yeah, of the world. Yeah, he got them all. WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO. So, so you saw something in, in Devin Haney a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was helping him out a little bit there, and I got him on the, you know, they took my advice, the father and the son took my advice. And I'm glad to see him where he's at today. You know, he's at the top of it. He's probably one of the best, if not the best fighter in boxing today. And you actually uh, do some work with uh, Devin Haney, right? Yeah, that is a work with him, yeah. I work with him. I was an advisor for him. Gave a couple of pointers and uh, making sure things were going right for them. You know, but they got their start. And now they're on their own. They're doing their own thing. That's good. I'm happy for them. I have to ask you uh, the million dollar question at the moment is uh, in regards to the shoving at the weigh-in. Your thoughts? Well, you know, that's something that I said. The, the commission's got to be very careful with that because it could have very easily get a, you see it happen before. And somebody, you know, what type of bike Tyson got to a scuffle with a Lettuce Lewis and uh, got nasty. You see that happen over and over again. The commission should keep these fighters like, you know, four feet away from each other. There's somebody in between them. That face-off stuff I don't like because when they get too close of clubs, that's good for promotion. But, you know, these guys, uh, yesterday, and with that push, I was double shaking with a throw the punch and cut Devin Haney or something like that, or they would have got hurt, then what happened to today's fight? Or the whole show would have been canceled. There's no need for them to be up close, you know? He be good sportsman like conduct. Uh, what do you say to those uh, who uh, say Devin Haney might be nervous, and and that's that's the reason why he stopped uh, Lomachenko? You know, anybody can get nervous. I mean, this is probably the biggest fight for Devin Haney. I mean, Lomachenko's been been on the top already, but you know, Devin Haney is a young. Puppy, I would say, you know, he's he's breaking in to the big, the big, the big fights, and he probably he'd probably be a little nervous, and that's that's normal, you know. It's good to be a little nervous, but if you go there too cautious, I mean, too cocky, too confident of yourself, uh, you're gonna make a mistake, and uh, that's why it's good to be a little nervous. Keep you on your toes. At the same time, we got most uh, boxing fans picking Devin Haney to fight. They think that Devin Haney's what? Gonna win this fight. Well, he, 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 has, he has a good possibility because he's young. He got to reach. He got great boxing skills, you know. And uh, it's gonna be a, uh, you know, it's gonna be interesting back back to see him. But Devin Haney has a lot of talent. You know, he's only like 22, 23 years old. And uh, Lobachenko has seen his better days already. He's been around a little longer, but not not as many fights. But he's had like 300 amateur fights, and that's okay. But those are amateur fights. But now we're talking about the uh, bigger fights with, you know, with, with seasoned fighters. Well, Devin Haney going to beat up against one of the better ones, if not the best fighter he's ever fought up to date. But had Devin Haney gets by today, then you know that Devin Haney is a real deal. Uh, we can't take nothing away from uh, Roman Peckle because... He has had uh, great experience at the same time. He's fought some, I, some top guys. No, no question about it. I mean, he knows he knows the game inside out. He's a veteran. He's been around. 
he's also getting real good. He, he, he has less fights than Devin Haney, but he's had against better opposition, and that's the difference. You know, he comes there with more experience against professional fighters. And, and top fighters. And, and uh, you know, Devin Haney has a lot of talent, but the one thing I always hear a lot of uh, uh, boxing fans criticize and say that uh, Devin Haney doesn't have power. Do you think there's a possibility that Devin Haney can possibly uh, go for a knockout? Yeah, Devin Haney can punch. I've seen him. I, I know his power. He can punch. So who ever say he, he's not a puncher? And get in there with him, you see. He got, he got, he got a decent punch. He, he got some, something behind it. You know? And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good fight for I think Devin Haney can get, get him by this fight today. If Devin Haney wins, they're going to say, well, he fought a washed-up fighter. That Devin Haney, Lomachenko, you know, he passed his prime. That's what they're going to say. And if Lomachenko wins, they're going to say, you see, well, I'm going to check with one of the better ones. And they go, everybody, everybody goes with the winner, you know? And uh, <laughs> but it's going gonna, gonna to be a good fight. I predict that it's going to be an outstanding fight for both fighters. I predict that uh, the fans who watch this fight today are going to say to themselves, wow, we're going to see the nice young fighter coming up the rank. You know, you don't fight too many fighters coming to that level. Every Like every 10 years, you get a fighter like Adelo Alvarez, like a Mike Tyson. Like Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, many years in between Oscar De La Hoya, you, you know, you find maybe every seven or eight years somebody pops in. I think right now there's Devin Haney's time. It's Devin Haney's time, but uh, you know, after this fight, uh, everyone wants to see Devin Haney versus uh, possibly uh, Shakur Stevenson or Tank Davis. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be good because uh, see, uh, David Haney is pretty tall. He's about five ten, if I'm not mistaken, and he's got a good good height, good reach. He's definitely gonna be a world full, but he's developed 100. percent He'll be a, a full fledged welterweight and maybe even a super a super welterweight at 154. So he's gonna be he because he got the height and the reach to the body for that kind of a fighter. And then he gonna say he can't stay too long in the latter division. That's okay when he was. Like, you know, really young, 20 years old, okay. But every year, as every year goes on, the weight puts on as well. And you got to get, you know, a little stronger. You know, you saw what happened to Ryan Garcia the other day, you know, try to make that catch weight at 136. I think Ryan Garcia should have been at 140, and, you know, he'd be a much better fighter. I mean, he's not finished it because he got stopped with a body shot. Doesn't mean that your career is over. I mean, you see many fighters, great ones, Tyson, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, how many uh, Canelo Alvarez, I mean, a lot of fighters have lost. And you know what? They come back, they, they, they learn a lot from the losses. As, as when you don't learn anything, you know, that's when you say, well, he didn't learn anything from that. If you, you get something like Canelo, when he fought Floyd Mayweather, it made him a better fighter. He was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> it made him a much better fighter. So sometimes you need a loss to wake you up and realize, wait a minute. You know, that, I learned from that one. But now he learned from Devante uh, Davis that that body shot, you know, the, you kill the body, the head dies. But, you know, you, now you know a little be better defense when you get out there with a fighter like Devante Davis. But at a different weight, not at 135, 136. That's not a weight for, for Ryan Garcia. And it's definitely not the weight for uh, uh, Devin Haney at 135. You know, you got to be uh, much up, up, up in at 140, 140. Seven. That's Devin Haney's weight class. Uh, speaking of one forty, maybe we can see uh, Devin Haney versus uh, Roly Romero, who just fought. Yeah, I know Ro Roly. Uh, you know he fought a forty-year-old guy last week, and uh, he he lucky he walked away with that belt. But uh, Roly, you know, he talked a lot of smack, and uh, and uh, like an old man, forty years old, you know, put him down. And he's lucky that, uh, that the fight will stop when it will stop because he was behind on two of the scorecards. <laughs> but, you know, the last time I had you on, we talked about how hard it is to be a referee. Your thoughts on Tony Weeks? Well, you know, sometimes uh, things happen in boxing. I mean, when you, with those kind of 
uh, calls happen like that, where you kind of like stop the fight a little premature. What happened? He was on the blind side. He, he didn't see the punches. They, obviously, if he would have saw the punches that they would not landed, he would have not stopped it. But apparently, he was on the, on, the, on the blind side. And by the time he got to the middle of it to see the action, that's when he jumped in to stop it. So, I mean, uh, I mean, Tony's done a great job. Remember when he fought uh, uh, Diego Corrales at Castillo? You know, it was probably one of the best stoppers and one of the best fights in boxing history, best comeback from a fighter. I mean, Diego Corrales, but he got knocked out. So, I mean, everybody was praising uh, Tony Week for a fine job that he did that night. You know, not many referees would have made that call. And, uh, of course, by uh, she, uh, she got, uh, Diego Corrales uh, throwing out, spitting out the mouthpiece, you know, he got a little bit more time because of that. And that kind of saved him. Uh, Tony did the right thing and deducted the point. But uh, the fighter recouped, you know, and that's how he got back. But you know, Diego Corrales was one of the better fighters out there in his division. But, uh, uh, but well, we're going back to Tony Weeks, an excellent referee. But uh, he he had an off night uh, Saturday night when he made that call, uh, prematurely stopping it because he didn't see the punches. Uh, the, the question everyone has is why why, why is Tony Weeks talk, talked? Everyone wants to know what happened. Everyone wants to you know talk to Tony Weeks. <laughs> well, like I said, Tony Weeks was on the blind side. You know, and he saw the guy. He knew the guy was hurt. You know, he he got dropped with a with tractor. He was dropped. He got up. He was not a hundred percent. He was not coherent a hundred percent. He was uh, kind of like really. Uh, he was ba barely making it, but he wasn't getting hit with those punches. He was getting away from the punches. You know, and uh, and Tony thought he was getting hit, but actually he wasn't. So you know, he made the call. That's something he got. He got to live with for the rest of his life. You know, just like when Richard Steele stopped the Phillies at the Chavez and built a Taylor fight, people never forgave Richard Steele for stopping the fight with two seconds to go. You know, I mean, Mel Taylor was never the same after that. But uh, people will always continue to say, well, you know, Richard Steele would have won him as a referee for our fight because he can do something, you know, so it hurts your career. You know, other fighters that are going to, if she told him we're going to be the referee, they may say, no, no, we don't want him. You know, they can't recommend a referee, but they can surely say, I don't want a referee, and they can give me a reason why. And they, you know, they'll say, well, what happened in that particular fight? You know, we're afraid that he may do that to us as well. So it hurts a referee's career when you make a call like that. It does. And now that you brought up uh, Chavez Taylor, I, I was just thinking, uh, what if uh, Lou Duva was there that night with Tony Beeks? Uh you know, we we saw what Lou Duva did when uh, Richard Steele stopped that uh, Charles yeah. Taylor. <laughs> yeah, Lou, Lou Duva would have had a stroke in the ring. <laughs> yeah, he was good. He was a good trainer, hell of a trainer, good guy. And he, he got his his daughter his in law down, Kathy Duva, who's running the uh, the, uh, the, the the I forgot the name of the promotional company, but they uh, they been they've been doing boxing since the seventies. They've been involved with boxing, and Lou Duba was a hell of a trainer. I mean, you would have a trainer. He was good, and he was always ready to, to jump in and try to intimidate the referee if he felt something was not right. So when something goes wrong in the fight, you know, he would, uh, he would make sure that he got noticed in the corner. But he made that one mistake of coming up to, to, to the ring, up the steps of the ring, and, 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 and Miller Taylor was paying attention to him and not paying attention to the referee, with the referee kept asking him, you okay, you okay? And he would look at a Lou Duba at the, at the corner of the ring, giving him instructions. He was not focused on the referee. He was focused on, on uh, Lou Duba, and then the referee stopped the fight. So you were not responding to me, and you were hurt, so that's why I stopped the fight. So you got to wonder, did Lou Duba do the right thing, or should he stay, you know, just stay back and not, you know, distract uh, the uh, Melo Taylor from the, the the instructions for the referee for Richard Steele. So that's what happened that night. But uh, you know, but the Bill Taylor was never the same again after that. You know, and Chavez went on to the, have several fights after that. And I was a referee for about five of Chavez's fights. You know, he won with Peter Whitaker, which was also a controversial 
type uh, of the scores of the judges. A lot of judges thought that that would have won that fight. And I did a Chavez with uh, Oscar De La Hoya. But I stopped the fight in the fourth round after Chavez got a nasty cut in the first round from Baha Jeff from Oscar De La Hoya. Then I did Chavez with uh, the largest crowd box in history, 136,000 fans, the stadium of Steca, with uh, against uh, um, let's get from Henderson. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's a lightweight, former lightweight champion. That four Chavez. Uh, right. I would know him with Hogan, Greg Hogan. Greg Hogan. Greg Hogan, yeah, and uh, and I ended up stopping in the fifth round. I know Chavez. I, 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 uh, Hogan said a couple of bad things before the fight. He was he was taunting Chavez and told Chavez, "Ah, you fought a bunch of Tijuana taxi drivers." And Chavez got upset. He said, oh, "Yeah, I'm gonna kick your butt when we get in that ring. I'm gonna punish you." So he had, he had Hogan down in the first round. I said, "Wow, you know." But then he, he carried him for about another four rounds. He wanted to punish him, and then I saw enough after he got dropped in the fifth in the fourth round, and he got up and I, he had him up against the rope, and I jumped in and stopped it. And I, I saw enough there, you know. But uh, that was a good old, good old fight with Willis and Chavez and Hogan, you know, with Taylor and Whitaker, De La Hoya. I mean, they were good fights that I was, I was involved with, you know. But uh, I'm glad I was not the referee for that Taylor fight, you know. <laughs> I probably would have said, done, done the same thing. You know, to the referee, you know, you're paying attention to the fighter. You, you want to make sure you're not really paying attention how many seconds are left. You look at the fighter you saw, he's in a concussive episode. He's out on his feet. He's not responding to you. Your duty is to wave it off. But with two seconds to go, you know, you wonder, you know. But, but Richard, they have a clock on his head. That, that's not what he's looking at. He's looking at the safety. He's not looking at the clock. My, my question to you is, do you think that uh, Chavez could have landed another punch with only seconds remaining? Uh, I, you know, he probably not, but Richard didn't know how much time was remaining. <laughs> you see? So, you know, he said, if I let it continue, and uh, Chavez hears him, he said, if you would not know how, many time, how much time was left, he probably would have not stopped it, but he didn't know how much time was left. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully nothing happens like that in this fight that we have tonight. With well, you know, Boxing is full of surprises. And sometimes you have so many things called boxing. But look what happened last Saturday with Wally Romero and uh, that kid uh, from uh, with the other kid from Venezuela, right? Barroso. Barroso, yeah, from Venezuela. He forty years old, but I uh, he didn't look like he he felt like he was thirty years old, you know. <laughs> so uh, I mean, a guy forty years old like that that was not supposed to be. Uh, I think he was. A, I think I think he was a substitute, wasn't he? Yes. He was the last of the fighter, and he comes in there, and they did a number on Rolly Romero. So, so that le leads me to say, uh, we cannot count out Lomachenko, even though Lomachenko is the old fighter. You, you you can't cut him now. You can't cut him out because look, like I said, look what happened last week. You know, with a young fighter, Rolly Romero against a forty-year-old. You know, from uh, from Venezuela, that was people didn't expect that. There people didn't see that one coming. <laughs> the power is the last thing to go on a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be interesting fight tonight. I think that tonight's fight gonna be really, really interesting because you get this could be the passing of the torch, you know, from uh, Lomachenko to uh, David Haney, just like the passing of the torch with Chavez and Oscar De La Hoya. You know, that night was the passing of the torch. After that fight, that was it for Chavez, and De La Hoya took over. So my final question to you is, uh, how does Haney win? By decision or by knockout? If it's, if it's a Haney win, it's going to be a decision. If it's a Lomachenko win, it's also going to be a decision. So it's going to be a, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a knockout from either, either side. But it's going to be an interesting fight. But don't be surprised, anything could happen in boxing. I mean, I mean, when you saw the fan man, I came in to the Caesars Outdoor Stadium where I had a Holyfield was fighting at Reddick Bowl. The second time they fought, you know, of the trilogy that they had, uh, the fan man came. Who the hell would think a fan man would 
come in on the sky up off of, I mean, you know, it was crazy. So anything could happen in boxing, you know? <laughs> so be, be prepared for, for anything. That's what I tell the referee. Be prepared. Sometimes the lights go out, there's no light. I see the lights go out completely. Uh, sometimes the ring had just caved in. The ring gave in, and in the middle of a fight, what the hell are you going to do, you know? The lights go out. Something, could, something crazy can happen. So don't be surprised something crazy happens tonight. We hope not, but be prepared for anything. Hey, hey Joker Tess, before I let you talk, the craziest thing I've ever seen in Boston is uh, Mike Tyson biting Holyfield. You know, that was, uh, that was uh, the great referee, uh, Bill Flays. Oh, uh, it, it was it was the uh, the fight where where Mike Tyson told he told everybody if Joe Cotto would have been the referee that would have never happened because he says uh, he said Mills Lane let Holyfield get away with with headbutting him he said he was headbutting him intentionally that Mike Tyson was cut pretty pretty bad and he said Holyfield knows how to fight using the head and that's what happened that night but um, uh, you know I mean, talking about crazy things happening who the hell would have thought that Mike Tyson gonna bite the guy's ear off. <laughs> You know, you got to make sure these fighters have a little something to eat before they get into the ring. <laughs> you know, have a little appetizer before you get in there because, man, my Tyson went in there pretty hungry that night. <laughs> Joker Tess, it's great to have you back on once again. I appreciate it. And uh, I can't wait till tonight. I okay, yesterday, yesterday I had uh, Julian the Hawk. Jackson on my show yesterday at the Joe Cortez show on the YouTube channel that I have. Yeah. Yes. Julian the Hawk Jackson, uh, Jackson. And he had 55 wins. Out of 55 wins, he had 49 knockouts. And I had the other referee, uh, uh, Jackson, twice. Once in Spain and once here in Las Vegas. And uh, he was amazing. Young yeah, man, he's really sharp, you know, for his age and for the, I mean, he was knocking out guys left and right. You know, he was just amazing. It was a great show yesterday. We had a half hour talk show talking about his career and talking about what he's doing today. He's got the fighter by the name of Pruitt, uh, Dion Pruitt, who's uh, 22 years, 23 years old. He's a fighter out of uh, the Virgin Islands. And, um, and he's with uh, Julian Jackson, doing a lot of work with the homeless right now in the Virgin Islands. So I'm very happy for what he's doing. He has eight kids, four boys and four girls, and uh, he's one of the great ones. And, uh, he's very sharp, very caring, and very loving. I, I remember Julian Jackson, big puncher, scary puncher. Uh, yeah. Julian yeah, yeah. Jackson, yeah. Uh, so you got to watch that show. Watch that. Who's ever watching now? What, go and watch the, the Joe Cortez show on YouTube, and you'll see yesterday's show with Julian Jackson. And... Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing fighter, amazing person. It's good to see what he's doing these days as a clean cut guy, a good family man, and he's helping out the community with the homeless. I really love that a lot. Joker Tess, I will check it. Okay, buddy. Well, you guys take care. It's nice talking to you guys. Enjoy the fight tonight. It's going to be a good one tonight. It's going to be uh, one of the better ones. Enjoy it to the fullest. Thank you, Joker. Okay, guys, take care. God bless. Keep your guards up at all times. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. <laughs>